You've heard the story of the three little engineers, right? One of them was building his SOC out of straw, and the big bad wolf came in and blew it all down. The next one was building his system with an SOC fabricated in bulk CMOS. And the power consumption was way too high, so he needed a fan, which blew down that straw one again. And the big bad wolf came in with some neutrons and caused single event upsets in the registers and the temperatures got too high and, well, you can imagine, it was not pretty. But the third little engineer built his system of an SOC fabricated with fully depleted silicon on insulator. That's FDSOI to you and me. And his system worked just fine for years, no matter how much huffing and puffing that stinker wolf did. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Now, obviously, we all want to be that third little engineer. And my guest today, Jeff Cunningham from NXP, is going to tell us about the technology behind the NXP IMX 8X family of applications processors. So we don't have to worry about that silly wolf ever again. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about the NXP IMX 8X family of applications processors. Hi, Jeff. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, Jeff. So why does this technology make a difference in applications processors? Are there any specific advantages to the product? It has some actually huge advantages. There's advantages for power consumption. There's advantages for temperature operating range, for the soft error rate, and then also just for the supply range. One of the main advantages of the fully depleted silicone on insulator, the FDSOI, is, is that we have a very wide operating range, you know, anywhere from down to 0.6 volts all the way up to 1.1 volt. And that really allows us to target in very specific power performance targets on a subsystem basis, not on an SOC basis. So there's a lot of really unique things that we can do there. So where could we use IMX 8X? It's a fantastic product because it really is very versatile. It's truly a mass market part in the sense that it enables a very wide set of applications, but those applications, it allows for a very high level of reliability and precision. You don't want your car breaking down or getting the blue screen of death on a regular basis. You want something that's going to actually be able to function for 10 years in an always-on case for industrial use cases or for automotive when it's important that you're looking at your speedometer or your fuel gauge. You don't want any errors there, and that's a costly repair. And we strive to ensure that you're getting the best quality product with reliability and safety in mind. Okay, Jeff, so we're talking about reliability, but how far can we go and under what conditions? We're talking about some very big stringent conditions. The FTSY technology itself is intrinsically strong for, for many years. It's actually much stronger than comparable bulk and FinFET technologies. It really is kind of that inflection point between your high degree of analog and then your mixed signal technologies. And so FDSOI very specifically, it's got a very wide range to operate very low to very high. This enables the end customer to do things that are unique to the technology itself, meaning that you can tailor the design not to work in a, in a fanless environment, for example, into a closed off environmental conditions. It does have a lot of really good benefits for the extreme cases. Okay, so what's really specifically different about this technology? Oh, that's a great question because it's, it's really what's fundamental to our whole frame of thinking for this part. And that is we need to be better. We need to be something unique and different. What is our value added? And our value added, you can see here, this is a cross-section of an FDSOI transistor. The S and the D, that's source and drain, doesn't really matter. It goes both ways. But the gate is different. And the gate sits on top of a buried oxide. And what's unique about FDSY, and I can't not mention FDSY without biasing, and that is when you apply voltages underneath the buried oxide layer, you're allowed to basically change the threshold of the transistor. Now, why is that important? That's important because it enables you on a transistor level to basically change the VT. Where other technologies, you have to pay for that processing optimization through process, and then you're it's kind of fixed and you don't have the range that you would with FDSOI. With FDSOI, you can really take that bias to both a very low power condition to a very high power performance oriented condition. Cool. Can we look under the hood? Oh, of course. That would be great. What I'm showing here is kind of building on that earlier TEM picture we showed. And that is 
this is all the different layers that go into this. We have partnered with Samsung on the technology, meaning that Samsung manufactures the technology. They've been a wonderful partner with us. And they offer a 28 FDSOI. And the 28 FDSOI, it enables you to really have a isolation of your devices. You can see there we've got a buried oxide that is uh, just underneath the source and drain. And what's really unique about that is it cuts the parasitics down on the source nodes, as well as reducing some of the gate capacitance. And that really enables you to have a very fast switching transistor. And it also enables you to have a less leaky transistor, which for low power applications is very critical. Okay, but Jeff, what does all of this really get me as an engineer? This gets you your dynamic control and your very wide ranging of VTs. This kind of graph here that I'm showing basically just shows that you have a high degree of control at the transistor level. Your most fundamental building blocks, you're able to control them through voltage biasing and controls through design techniques. This really enables us to, to really focus on our strengths as a company in terms of precision analog and digital control of systems. So are there any other benefits other than shifting the threshold voltage? This is really about the end customer experience and being able to have a highly reliable system plays a very big role in the applications processors. Having the soft error rate really allows us to tailor the memories to the smallest possible configurations needed and really focus our attention on the reliability aspects where we can really make a big difference. The soft error rate, because it is, you know, these are particles that are coming down from the sun and random sources. This is actually pretty critical for our needs, especially when you're talking about industrial or consumer applications where you don't want the blue screen of death, where you don't want uh, your machine stopped where you have to have a 10 years always on applications processor. This is actually quite critical and useful. Okay, cool. Can you give me an example? And does this have a benefit on memory? This has wonderful benefits on memory. As we kind of talked about before, we do have about a 30x improvement in terms of the soft error rate, which is basically a failure. That's what's nice about FDSOI is that because it is an isolated technology, the chances of getting these soft errors are substantially lower. But from a feature standpoint, it enables you to really look at the subsystems and focus those subsystems on what they're good at. Mission critical systems that have the need ECC on their external controllers, for example, we were able to spend a lot of time making sure that our, our memories, our DDR3L memories were ECC compliant. It really allowed us to offload some of our tasks to less critical areas for processing, which you know has a lot of benefits for the design as a whole. It enables to really do some really cool integration techniques with both the ARM cores and the DSPs. Not necessarily a technology benefit, but we didn't have to worry about adding in the complicated redundancies and you know a lot of the unique things that we would have to do from a truly logic technology. The technology was was very forgiving in that way. So we're here at NXP, but what makes you guys specifically better here? Yeah, and that's wonderful because everybody's offering applications processors these days. And what makes us different and special? And that is our secret sauce and reliability. That really is how we test the time that we spend characterizing our models, characterizing our transistors, and, and making the complete system work how we want it to work and how our customers expect it to work. Operating at the very wide temperature ranges for automotive and industrial is not something that's easy. This is not a, an SOC or this is not a design that's just slapped together. This is something that has put through a lot of thought and love and caring to make sure that we're able to hit our targets. These details are, are very highly scrutinized. So how does this all apply? This applies to a product in a lot of different ways, but most specifically, it really allows you to have one processor, not a series of processors that a customer is going to have to place onto their design. This enables a monolithic design that allows you to have multi-displays, multi-domain functionality, and really create a user experience with one processor and not a grouping of processors and not a processor that's going to cause you to go into a different thermal budget or that's not going to be tailored for your specific application need. We're giving the customer basically what they want in terms of their functionality, and then they can program it and use it as such. Cool. All right. Well, Jeff, can you give me your main points, please? The 8X is a really special processor. It really does allow the end customer to have a high degree of confidence using it in their automotive and industrial applications. So you're not going to get the blue screen of death while you're driving your automobile or your industrial machines are not going to shut down. This processor was designed from the ground up, actually from the transistor up, and as we talked about from the design threshold up, where we're really focused on quality, where we're really focused on getting the best possible experience for our customer and making sure that it delivers on what we expect. The iDataMax 8 family of processors really does cover a, a very wide range of features and functionalities with the parts that we have offered. You have different core optimizations that you can go with. You have different peripherals that you can look at. All of these IPs have really been designed and, and integrated from the ground up and tested and verified in a very stringent environment. So we're, we're actually very proud of the reliability and the work that we've put into creating these. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Jeff. It was wonderful. Thank you for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? 
There you can find even more information about NXP's IMX 8X family of applications processors. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. Can't miss it right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, keyword EE Journal.